Hi, I'm Jed. This is Cook Culture. So it's been a minute. I've been busy. We've built a new YouTube studio. We moved one of our retail locations and in the move, I was able to build a dedicated studio. So I'm really excited about having a studio just for creating media. It can be set up all the time for doing more and more testing of cookware from all around the world. So I've got a great lineup right now of cookware that I've been collecting that people have been sending me uh, that I am excited to you know, show you this versus that and why one works better in my opinion than another one and continuously helping people understand how they can move away from coded cookware. That is Teflon based, nonstick like Teflon, all the fancy brands that try to tell you that they're fancier that are just the same as Teflon, ceramic, you know, rock coated, whatever it is, anything coated, how do we move away? And when that move happens, you know, how do you transition into carbon steel, stainless steel, uh, or cast iron? How does that move happen? You know, that's the primarily what this channel is about. Uh, and that's what I'm really excited to continue to do. So we've got some really neat things coming up here. First off, the next video that I'm going to be making that I'm excited to just share with you right now is that OXO has made a carbon steel pan. And what this means is that the big brands, OXO is a massive brand. They make, you know, uh, garlic presses and potato peelers and potato mashers and storage containers and lots of different things, all mass produced, all in mass places, um, you know, in department stores and, and larger retailers, uh, and to smaller retailers, but they're just everywhere. They're omnipresent in kitchen world. Uh, they are making a carbon steel pan. And why this is significant is that they are a mass maker of cookware and different things uh, for the kitchen. They aren't a niche brand. They don't do things that are niche. -y. They aren't going to do something that's awkward and difficult to communicate to somebody just because it's filling a, a spe specific niche. And the movement away from nonstick has been kind of like that. It's been, you know, a niche -y thing. You know, it started with a few people not wanting a chemical. Hey, I don't want to have this chemical in my kitchen, so I'm not going to. That's been around for decades. You know, to people like, hey, maybe I don't want to be replacing these pans all the time. They keep going in the garbage, so I'm not going to. So people that are a little more conscious. And then there's been the, the, the collectors, of course, people that have never gone away from cast iron, either their grandparents or whichever taught them, and they've just always been there. But this is a very niche or has been a niche part of the population. It's been a small part of the population. But it's been growing. And you know, I've seen it growing in our retail stores. We have more and more people. But when these guys make this kind of a move, this is big news. This is a, a shift within our industry. And what this means is that they understand, for whatever the reasons are, and I'll give you an example of what I think the reasons are, um, is that they need to get into this world because nonstick cookware is under threat. And what that means is that the chemical that is used in making nonstick cookware, it is being legislated against. So it's becoming restricted and harder to sell, not so much at the pan level. So what that means is that, oh, this contains some of this type of nonstick chemical, so you can't buy this pan. But upstream, where the real problem is, is the, the massive amount of the chemical when it's made, it has waste that is created with it, and that waste needs to go somewhere. And a lot of time it's ended up in waterways or being disposed of in an incorrect way. And it is a massive pollutant and it's a chemical that never ever breaks down. It is omnipresent, it is everywhere, it's in almost everybody. And these are the, the group of chemicals that they call forever chemicals that are used in all different things that have like a nonstick type coating. It's in c computer cables, it's in Gore-Tex, it's in pans, it's in carpet and furniture, uh, nonstick coating, Scotchgard. Uh, it's, it's everywhere, it's all over the place. And so what's happening is that they're trying to limit this upstream. And what that's going to happen is that nonstick cookware is that it is going to become either banned in certain places, some states in the US are banning it outright, and other places, you're going to start seeing a big warning label on cookware. You're going to go into a store and a non say this is a nonstick pan. It's going to be hanging in a store with a big warning, like a cigarette package, like warning, 
These are the chemicals that it, it contains. And not only are the chemicals that are in the, the, the pan surface, but any chemicals that were used in any of the machinery upstream, if they had any of these forever ever type chemicals in them that are proven carcinogen, they have to be labeled onto the pans. And this is happening state by state. And this isn't a red or blue issue. This is happening in all different types of states where they've been pretty heavily impacted with these chemicals. And that is, you know, all over the place, unfortunately. And so what a company like Octo is seeing is this massive impact. This is a, a big cost of having labeling that's gonna impact sales, and it's also cost to adding this on packaging and so on and so forth. And this is a hassle for them. And they see that impact in the bottom line. So an alternative is carbon steel. So this is a really basic pan. It's like a pan you could buy on Amazon for 50 bucks. And it is going to do a pretty decent job, I think. So I'm excited about getting into it with this pan to just see, hey, you know, what are you gonna be able to get really, really available, you know, Target or wherever, and just like pop in and grab yourself a forever pan that's going to work wonderfully. And what do you need to know about it? So this comes pre-seasoned, which is a great idea because sometimes in carbon steel, the pre-seasoning process can take some time and some effort. Um, so coming pre-seasoned is bad and I'm excited to see what kind of pre-seasoning they've got going on in this. Um, you know, it, it's thin, it's light, it's not what I would choose myself, but you know, I'll get more into that in the video and I'm gonna probably compare it against something in which I'm very familiar with, just to get a sense of like, how is this pan? Anyways, you know, that's one example of what I'm really excited about doing going forward here. So thanks for listening. And if there's something that you are really interested in me testing, a brand or a type of something, let me know in the comments below and I will consider it and try to get at it. So thanks so much, take care.